Hi guys and welcome to this video on understanding decimals a year eight level if there ever was one and it is building on previous videos and there is a lot more to come that's going to power through uh, the real number syllabus over here in Australia but uh, it doesn't matter where you are it could be any country in the world this is still relevant maths work it's really good to see you if you haven't already done so can you subscribe by clicking that little doohickey in the corner and mathsguru.com is where you'll find downloadable notes and lessons organized by textbook and all the excitement that basically just couldn't you know be sold in shops so if you want to head over there it's absolutely free to sign up um, and I look forward to seeing you there okay understanding decimals now we've done a few videos previously on fractions uh, adding fractions subtracting fractions and all that malarkey and I know people find fractions hard now we're gonna deal with decimals right we're gonna look at what a decimal number is inequalities um, turning decimals into fractions and all that exciting stuff. Now, first things first, ladies and gentlemen, one of my big bugbears in life is what you're about to see or what you're seeing behind me now. I've just marked some year 12 maths work and no word of a lie, the number of people out there who have written a, a monetary amount as 7.4 uh, has lost them a huge number of marks. For every time they do that, they lose a mark. You, under no circumstances anywhere in the world, walk in and see that type of stuff. Now, all right, yes, you do. In some very swanky restaurant, they try and show off and they give you prices without that zero. But monetary and money in maths must have two numbers after the decimal point. And if you're using your calculator, you must, must, must make sure that you understand what your calculator is showing you. Just don't just blindly write down stuff. Unfortunately, it will cost you marks. Now, number and place value, um, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you, when I taught this uh, way, way, way many, many years ago, back in year six, I think I spent six months doing the same thing over and over again. I was quite ready to jump off uh, the highest building I possibly could if someone had said, uh, you're going to do another video on number and place value. Now, thankfully, I'm feeling a lot better about it now, so I think I'm just in a place where we can do it for this video. And you've been dealing with thousands and hundreds and tens and units and tenths and hundredths and thousandths. I don't know why, but on the end, it's not the easiest thing to do in any way, shape or form. But obviously, they're all related to place value. So, for example, we have the number 345.723. That is 345.723. Now, I'm not writing this out 10 times bigger just for the fun of it. So we now know that this is my hundreds column. This is my tens column. This is my units column. Right? The decimal point is where you line everything up under. This is my tenths column, and I'm going to write one on ten there. This is my hundredths column. This is my thousandths column. And so long as when you're dealing with numbers, you line them up in the right place, and you realize that this number here stands for four tens or 40, then to be honest with you, you've got number and place value pretty much sorted until we ask you to order them. But we'll come by that to that in just a second. So what happens if we're asked to compare decimals? Now obviously when it's got lots of numbers of decimal points, it becomes quite challenging to do that because you're supposed to look at it and your brain actually fritzes a little bit. But that is why writing them in order, one under each other, makes life a little bit easier, all right? So this is an example taken from the Cambridge Essentials series of textbooks, and I think it's freaking awesome. So thank you, Cambridge, for letting me use your textbooks. First thing I'm gonna do is write down five, seven, point, eight, nine, three, four, and two. And underneath it, lining up the decimal points, I'm gonna write the number five, seven, point, eight, nine, six, three, and one. Now, believe it or not, Hopefully, now I've written it that way, everyone should be able to absolutely instantly tell me which is the highest one. Why? Because your brain now can process things in terms of columns. We now know they are the same. They are the same. They are the same. They are the same. So up until this point here, there is no difference in the number. Was that blatantly obvious when I looked at those two numbers there? Maybe, maybe not. If you can see it, much respect to you guys, I couldn't. Now I can see a very noticeable difference here. Which number is bigger? It's the six, and so in which case, I can now say that this number here is bigger. Now, in maths, we want to be able to write these things using inequality signs. And it says here, actually, very much case, write an inequality sign. What on earth is an inequality sign? Well, 
Let's recap that very quickly. All of this stuff is prerequisite stuff, and stuff you need to know. So there are three symbols, a greater than, well actually more than that, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and in fact equals. Now the equals one you use all the time. But you know, so many people don't know what an equal sign means. I know it's weird, huh? But it, what it means is what's on the left hand side is identical to what's on the right hand side. Going back to each of the other symbols, this one here is greater than, this one here is less than, that's dreadful, let's try that one again to make it look like than. This one here is greater than or equals to. And the way that that's or equals to is that little line there. So if we have this little line underneath here, that is equals to. So in this situation, that would be less than or equals to. Now, the weird thing is I actually think of this thing here as a crocodile. I know it's a bit weird, bear with me, but it's a crocodile. So actually what I now know is this gap here is much wider than that little gap there. It's going big gap. Gap or no gap, big gap, beady gap. So what I now know is that this number on this side must be bigger than this number on this side. Why? Because as I just said there, this gap between these two points is much bigger than that little point where they come to there. That's just the way I remember it. And so now I can write an inequality. I'll go back up here because we know that this one here is bigger. So I can write 57.89631 is bigger than 57.89342. And I said bigger than, greater than, who cares? It's just splitting hairs and I don't have a lot of that anyway. That's being able to put these things and compare them. You will have to be able to use the same idea to order them, but we're now gonna move uh, on to converting decimals to fractions. All right, now again, examples have come from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series with permission. And what I want to do is I'm going to convert 0.725 to a fraction. Now notice what it says here, simplest form. Building on all the videos we've done before, if you have a fraction, you have to cancel it down. Now, how do we do this? Well, I've got the value 0.725. I can use number and place value, all right? I can use number and place value because if we remember, let's zoom in very, very quickly. If you remember, this one here was my tenths column. This one here was my hundredths column, and this one here is my thousandths column. So because my last number fits in that thousandths column, then I can now write this here as 725 divided by 1000. It's exactly the same thing. That's one way to think about it. I like to think of it this way. How many numbers do you have after the decimal point? three, and in which case I'm now going to write that as 725 divided by one and three zeros. The reason it's got three zeros, three numbers after the decimal point. Now either of these ways are absolutely valid. Mathematicians prefer that way because it's not a shortcut. I'm looking back at that way going, eh, it's all right. Now is that my simplest form? No, it is not. So what I now need to do is start to cancel this down. And obviously my brain is gonna fritz on this. So first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to do it on your CAS calculator. Let's get rid of some of the information from a previous video. Let's clear all that if you will. And let's say, here is my fraction 725 on 1123. Hit enter and oh, that's annoying give me back my thing because, well, on this one here, if I actually turn this decimal down here to standard and I go back and I hit enter again, then lo and behold, out comes my fraction. So knowing how to use your calculator could make life a lot, lot easier for you, yeah? Um, basically, I would imagine that you could divide the top and the bottom by 25. I imagine that would be the biggest value you can go in there. Alternatively, divide by five, divide by five, and you will get the same value. Is there anything wrong in using a calculator to do this? Mm, yes and no. This one was a bit challenging. Right, write this value here as a fraction in its simplest form. And again, it's a trick. Now we know the value here is 5.12. Going back to what I had previously, if I write this large 5.12, I know this is my units, this is my tenths, and this is my one hundredths. So I now know, using the idea before, that I've got two 
in the hundredth. So the, the smallest number is 100, so I'm going to now write that as 12 on 100. What do we do with the units column? Well, it stays. It's just like writing a whole number. So I've now converted 5.12 into a mixed number. Is it in the smallest? Nope. Am I going to use my calculator to do this? Nope, because I noticed that both of these values here are in fact even numbers. And so writing those as they are, that becomes 5. Half of 12 is 6. Half of 100 is 50. Are they both even numbers? Yes, means I can do it again. 5 and 3 on 25. Does 3 go into 25? Is 25 in my three times table? Nope. Well, there we go. So that's 5 and 3 25ths. I don't think the CAS calculator does very well with that type of stuff. What about converting fractions to decimals and all of these things you need to be able to do? You will give lots of questions. If you have me as a teacher, I'll be giving you lots of questions soon to be able to do this. But convert the following fractions to decimals. Well, we can sort of do this backwards because what do you notice here? 100, okay? So I've got 100 on the bottom. If we go back to my decimal point, this was my tenths, this was my one hundredths, this was my one thousandths, this was my units. So what is the, bol the bottom? Hundredths. So that means that the lowest value, the smallest fractional part I'm going to have is that one on 100. And believe it or not, if you want my advice, now you write the numbers on the top, just backwards. 9, 3, point 2, and lo and behold, you get 2.39. That's one way of doing it. I think of it as also bouncing decimals. That's the same as 239 divided by 100. Now, when I divide, I always move the decimal point that way. And because I'm dividing by 100, which has two zeros, I'm going to move the decimal point two places that way. So it was 239, the decimal point was at the end there. It's going to move one, two places, which gives me 2.39. Now the reason I'm showing you different ways of doing this is find the one that works and the one that you can do every single time and you'll become a gun at this. As you get faster and faster and faster, you'll probably find that you move from this way to a different way. What about 9 on 25? Yuck, how are we going to do that? Well, yeah, believe it or not, I can fire up my calculator, do 9 divided by 25. Oh, oh go back to that decimal mode. Let's click back on decimal, if you will. Hit on that, gives me 0 0.36. So first things first, 0 0.36. But what if I had to do this using pencil and paper? Well, we like the bottoms of fractions to be 10, 100, 1,000, whatever else. I've got 9 on 25. Can I change that to be an equivalent fraction and change 25 into 100? Well, yes, I can add 75, but that's rubbish because we don't do that in maths. What I can do is say, well, 25 multiplied by 4 is 100. And so now 9 times 4 is 36. And I've now got 36 over 100. So that either becomes 36 divided by 100. And again, place value, two zeros. I can move my decimal point. So 36, there's my decimal point. Move it one, two places back. So it becomes in front and put a zero in front of it. Or if I minimize my calculator, I can say once again, I have uh, 36. Where was it? I've got 36 on 100. So there's my decimal point, there's one tenth, there's one hundredth. So there's the smallest value. So that six is going to go there, the three is going to go there, my decimal point has to stay, and I don't just leave it like standing there, it becomes 0 0.36. All right. Now, as I say here, when we can change the denominator to a multiple of 10, 10, 100, 1000, then life is so much easier. And there we go, guys. It is the end of this video. I know it is done. You've got to go and practice if you will. Hopefully it has been useful. If it has, leave me a comment below. No one ever gets to the end of these videos, so I never get any comments. I wonder what people do. I wonder if they just get bored after three minutes. Hopefully you're not. If you're still here, just let me know. I watched the end of this one. Uh, if you can also subscribe by clicking on the doohickey, greatly appreciated. Another video loading from the same series, also hopefully helpful. Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care. Keep safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.